Greetings once more from Mission Control Houston and welcome back to our continuing coverage of SpaceX's Dragon's mission to the International Space Station. Right off the bat, you're getting a live view of the Dragon spacecraft just a couple of feet away from its berthing port at the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module, also known as Node 2. The vehicle was grappled uh, just a little while ago at 5.40 a.m. Central Time, and since then, robotics controllers here in Houston have been working to maneuver the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm, which was used to capture the vehicle, uh, into this new attitude uh, with Dragon just a couple of feet away from its eventual berthing port. The team here in Mission Control Houston is overseeing the systems on board the International Space Station and these robotic maneuvers, and they've been doing so throughout the morning, working with the folks out at Hawthorne as well. I'm NASA's Dan Hewitt, and welcome back again to our coverage. I'll be taking you through for the next hour or so until we get Dragon attached to the International Space Station. It's packed with about 5,800 pounds of cargo on board with a lot in that pressurized capsule and also two pretty big experiments in the trunk portion of the Dragon at the bottom, which we'll go into detail in a little bit. We're continuing to get some pretty great views of the vehicle, though, as it sits poised at the end of that robotic arm, as it has been, again, since it was captured back at 5.40 a.m. Central. And to HRF laptop. copies. Thanks, Nemo. Since that capture, the crew has moved into the rest of their workday. Uh, you just heard on the Space to Grounds there, Nemo, that's Norishige Kanai from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. He was primed for the capture this morning and was backed up by NASA's Scott Tingle. They were in the uh, cupola module of the International Space Station, the big uh, bay window module looking down at Earth uh, with the robotics workstation to control that robotic arm in order to capture Dragon. And again, they did that uh, just about uh, two hours ago. Of course, this journey began when Dragon lifted off from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station atop a Falcon 9 rocket. This liftoff coming back on Monday at uh, 3.30 a.m. Central Time, 4.30 uh, p.m. Uh, over there on the East Coast, and that was 3.30 p.m. Central. Uh, both the Falcon 9 and the Dragon capsule um, have both seen use previously, that booster uh, used back on uh, CRS-12, the CRS-12 mission uh, back in August of last year. Uh, the booster performed as expected, delivering Dragon into its preliminary orbit, the entire flight uh, upwards taking about nine minutes. The first stage detaching and splashing down in the water as planned, and then the second stage being used to push Dragon into its preliminary orbit uh, before detaching and sending Dragon on its way. Uh, it was a great launch down there in Florida, uh, able to see Dragon and uh, the Falcon 9 on most of the way into orbit. Uh, only a couple of clouds in the area and fairly clear skies, as you can see from this replay. Again, this launch uh, back on Monday um, was successful. Uh, and then the grapple was set up by that. This is a replay from just a little bit earlier this morning. The grapple coming at 5.40 a.m. Central Time, 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, while the station and Dragon were flying just over the southern part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, that capture coming about 20 minutes ahead of schedule as uh, after they worked all the times from the different burns of the Dragon's thrusters, uh, able to get there a little bit ahead of schedule and able to uh, grapple it with the Canada Arm II robotic arm. But with that done, the vehicle has now been maneuvered to where it sits right now. And we're going to continue to see it get a little bit closer bit by bit to this berthing port uh, where it'll be attached to the space station. It'll uh, get attached. It'll have an initial capture and then a series of latches and ultimately 16 bolts will hold the vehicle in place. Once all of those 16 bolts are in place, we consider that stage two capture, and that's when Dragon is confirmed and attached. Uh, once that takes place, they'll 
do a series of leak checks, ensure a good seal between the spacecraft and the vehicle, and then ultimately it'll be up to the crew to open up the hatches. Uh, it's currently targeted to take place tomorrow morning uh, with the, um, the ingress, so the first time the crew will go in, uh, targeted to occur on Thursday morning. Uh, but we'll keep an eye out as uh, sometimes the crew do, uh, the crews do manage to get ahead of the time, uh, the timeline, but uh, we will see. Uh, inside Dragon, about 3,800 pounds of pressurized cargo that they're going to be unloading. Um, among that, over 2,000 pounds of experiments. And a quick breakdown for you here uh, in that uh, cargo inside the capsule, about 758 pounds of crew supplies, things like food, uh, clothes, and other items for the crew, uh, over 2,300 pounds of science investigations um, from both NASA and a number of different users taking advantage of the U.S. National Lab. Spacewalking equipment tipping the scales at 218 pounds, 326 pounds of vehicle hardware, spare parts, things like that. 108 pounds of computer resources and 24 pounds of Russian hardware that also including some food for the Russian crew members. And then again in the trunk over 2,000 pounds of payloads, uh, that two different payloads that are going to be attached to the outside of the International Space Station, totaling everything up 5,836 pounds. Right now, though, we're in an LOS, a loss of signal. We'll get that back shortly. Go ahead on to Andy. Hey, Ricky, I uh, just wanted to check if you were finished with your uh, exercise. We'd like to uh, get started with the no exercise constraint a little bit earlier so we can press ahead with the berthing if that's okay. Yeah, I'm uh, finished. Uh, let me just make sure everyone else is, uh, has the word. Hold on one sec. Andy, thanks so much for checking. We're good. I'm done. Perfect. Thanks a lot. And you're now hearing the voice of this man right here, Andreas Mogensen. He's the Capcom right now for the Orbit 1 team, which is about to hand over to Orbit 2. He's been here all morning overseeing and communicating with the crew members during that grapple phase uh, of Dragon's mission to the space station. Mogensen, an astronaut from the European Space Agency, flew to the International Space Station back in 2015. And uh, he was the first Danish astronaut selected by the European Space Agency, regularly serving as a Capcom here in Mission Control Houston. But the conversation you just heard them having was about exercise constraints. So the crew uh, exercising for about two hours every single day on uh, various pieces of equipment, things like um, a treadmill, um, also a device known as ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, all this to help uh, keep or preserve bone, muscle, and cardiovascular health while they're living in microgravity. Uh, that exercise can actually cause perturbations or can um, vibrations even 
um, to the station structure. So whenever doing delicate operations like attaching a spacecraft, uh, the teams will put a no exercise constraint in place just to make sure uh, nothing will throw anything out of alignment. So the crew done with their exercise for right now will be standing by. We should start to see a resumption of our efforts here uh, in Houston to attach Dragon to the International Space Station, as you can see, just a couple of feet away now. So we should start to see it move in shortly. And we do have some time until that occurs. So if you are tuning in right now, feel free to jump over on Twitter and use the hashtag AskNASA if you have any questions about today's mission or just anything about the International Space Station. And we'll try to get to as many of those during today's broadcast as possible. Again, that's hashtag AskNASA. And as you can see, Dragon now in motion once again. These commands all being sent by flight controllers down here uh, on the ground, commanding the robotic arm to continue maneuvering Dragon. It's getting a lot closer now. Again, we'll get it in place, and it'll have that initial capture. And then they'll be able to execute a series of latches and uh, 16 bolts that will ultimately lock Dragon in place. and keep it there for the next month or so during its mission to the space station. And you can th see things starting to get a little bit darker. They are about to pass into an orbital nighttime, already well over the Terminator line. You can see the Earth now dark beneath. The station actually flying over the uh, northeastern part of China right now, and then about to pass uh, just over Japan and then out over the Pacific Ocean and then in this night pass. Next sunrise will come in about 34 minutes from now. And hopefully we'll be really close to uh, having Dragon locked in place by then.
and the birthing operation for the spacecraft. A very slow, very deliberate process as the robotics officer working with a number of other flight control disciplines here in Houston to just constantly verify the alignment of the vehicle and the uh, preparedness of the common birthing mechanism. That's essentially the, uh, the port that Dragon's going to be attached to. Everything, though, continuing to proceed smoothly. Station on two, are you guys ready for uh, spacecraft four? Yes, we are privatized and ready for it.
And Dragon continuing to get closer and closer to that berthing port. Again, this is on the Earth-facing side of the Harmony module, also known as Node 2, where uh, SpaceX Dragons are typically attached. And this will be the second time this particular Dragon uh, has been attached to the space station, as this one flew previously on their eighth resupply mission. Uh, as mentioned, though, we did say we were going to try and take some of your questions using the hashtag AskNASA, and we did see a couple of, co of them come in, so we'll go ahead and run through a few. Uh, first off, we'll start with Naya Reborn, who wanted to know why was control of berthing transferred to ground control and not completed by the astronauts on the station? Well, one of the primary reasons is because it can. Um, typically, if there's something that uh, the teams down here on the ground can control, um, then it's always in our best interest to give the the task to the people on the ground as the time for the crew on board is so much more precious. Uh, and especially when it's a long uh, kind of drawn out process like this one, this allows the crew to get back into the rest of their day where they're uh, working on a number of different experiments today on board the International Space Station, uh, working with things like the Sphere satellites, uh, also getting a break to do things like eat lunch, um, exercise and get ready uh, to do additional tasks like opening Dragon's Hatch. So that's really why we like to hand off uh, stuff to the ground whenever possible. Uh, our next one coming in from Phil Wyeth, who wanted to know how does the docking port lock Dragon uh, to the International Space Station? Well, once it's in, it'll have that kind of initial contact and capture. And then there's a series of latches that will do that will help hold it in place. But then there's actually 16 bolts which will drive from the common berthing mechanism into that ring around Dragon, and that's what really locks it in place and secures it for its month-long stay. Next up, we got one from WT4Y Growbox who wanted to know what happens to the Dragon module after supplies are offloaded. Well. It'll be supplies and experiments will come off Dragon over the next couple of weeks and almost simultaneously and especially towards the end of its mission, a lot of stuff goes back in. Uh, as about 3,800 pounds of stuff, everything from uh, science experiments to um, any uh, other items that are coming back down for additional testing down here on Earth will actually get loaded back onto Dragon. Um, typically with departing cargo ships, we can load them with uh, trash, uh, dirty laundry, stuff like that, that the crew doesn't need on board anymore, and it'll get burned up in the Earth's atmosphere along with the vehicle. Dragon is special, though, in the fact that it actually survives that re-entry. It has a heat shield and then splashes back down in the ocean. So a lot of experiments get loaded onto Dragon for the trip back home. Uh, our next one comes from Eugene Lee, who wanted to know, do the astronauts get to request anything special in these cargo runs? Personal amenities, extra food, so on. Uh, they do get the option to have some allotments sent up from friends and family, um, and then also often the uh, the ground teams will send uh, some fresh fruit uh, foods for the crew, uh, everything from fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, sometimes the crews have gotten uh, special treats, things like pizza kits have been flown recently, and uh, ice cream. Uh, typically, a, a usual uh, passenger on these flights nowadays. Our next question comes from Worthington Publish, wanted to know why do we wait until tomorrow to offload the Dragon? Uh, that's basically just kind of how the timeline lines up. Um, there's a lot of work for the crew in the morning, throughout the entire morning, um, to monitor Dragon and uh, actually do this uh, grapple activity. That takes about half their day, and then they break and then as we said, get a, a chance to eat and exercise. And then once Dragon's attached, there's a lot that they have to do to uh, outfit what's known as the vestibule, basically the area between uh, the hatch on Dragon and the hatch in Node 2 in Harmony, um, where they'll do a bunch of leak checks and, and uh, just install some additional hardware in order to get ready to open the hatch. Uh, it's not rare for the crews to get kind of ahead of the timeline and open the hatch early, uh, especially if they have any uh, special foods or anything like that on board that they want to be able to get out. Um, but uh, the nominal plan of the normal timeline plan right now calls for the hatch to get opened up tomorrow, at which point they'll jump right into a lot of the science that just got brought up that also has to come down when Dragon departs a couple of weeks from now. 
And then our last one for now comes from Tony ESZ. He wanted to know, in case of an emergency, is the crew allowed, capable to escape with the Dragon? Uh, no, it's just a cargo vehicle, but that's why they have the Soyuz spacecraft uh, attached to the station that the crew rides up and down in. Those are their escape pods, if you will, um, that they use in case of any emergency situations. However, uh, SpaceX's Dragon, a crewed version, um, one of two commercial crew vehicles currently being developed along with Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. Um, and in the uh, not too distant future, uh, Dragon spacecraft carrying crew will serve that same function as the Russian Soyuz does right now, where it'll be the vehicle carrying crew to and from the station and also serving as that vehicle that they would uh, ride back down to Earth in the case of any emergency situations. So again, if you uh, have any questions about today's operations or again, just anything about the International Space Station, feel free to jump on Twitter, use the hashtag AskNASA, and we'll continue to get through as many as we can while Dragon inches its way towards that berthing port on the bottom of Node 2. And this is Mission Control Houston with a good update. The teams worked very quickly and very efficiently today, and we just got confirmation that second stage capture has occurred. All of the bolts in place. Dragon now firmly affixed to the Earth-facing side of Harmony. That uh, second stage capture coming at 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, while the station was flying over the central part of the Pacific Ocean. So again, just to confirm, Dragon now attached firmly to the International Space Station, all 16 of those bolts firmly in place. Uh, that uh, second stage capture coming at 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, the station about 251 statute miles over the Central Pacific. 
So with that, Dragon now attached to the International Space Station, the 14th resupply flight uh, for the commercial company SpaceX, servicing the International Space Station now in place after a very successful launch back on Monday, a grapple earlier this morning by the Expedition 55 crew. And thanks to uh, some quick work by flight controllers here in Houston, uh, Dragon now attached to the International Space Station. Uh, they're going to begin unloading cargo uh, tomorrow, most likely. Uh, that's where the schedule is looking. Um, and Dragon is scheduled to remain at the International Space Station until early May. So the crew are going to be working fast and furious over the next couple of weeks to begin offloading cargo, uh, working on a number of different science experiments that Dragon brought up, uh, over 2,300 pounds of research investigations inside of the capsule packed away. Uh, along with crew supplies and other items for the crew of Expedition 55. Robotics controllers here in Houston also not done with Dragon as they're going to work uh, over the next couple of weeks to remove two external payloads and attach them to the International Space Station uh, for research into material sciences and also uh, one from the European Space Agency gonna, going to be tracking uh, upper atmospheric uh, lightning phenomena uh, for better uh, use in uh, climatology and meteorology, um, so just a, a very diverse mix of uh, investigations and disciplines represented on board this capsule, which now attached to the space station and be making its way onto the station itself. So with that, though, we are pretty much done for today. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in for the grapple earlier this morning and then for this quick berthing show uh, with Dragon now attached. So be sure to continue to follow along. You can always uh, check us out online at nasa.gov slash station or continuing to use that hashtag Ask NASA on social media, and we'll do our best to uh, answer some of those uh, on our social media platforms. For that, though, we are going to go ahead and sign off one last time today. This is Mission Control Houston.